Welcome to the lecture series on uh, digital control systems. Uh, today's topic is uh, inverse Z transforms. Uh, previously, we have discussed uh, what are Z transforms, and uh, uh, we have discussed that in the Z transforms, suppose we have any sample data signal x of k. If you are applying Z transforms to this, you are, we are having a continuous time signal which is x of z. Now, to make this Z transforms more useful to the uh, mathematical part, we are trying to go for a, an inverse Z transforms where Z inverse represents the inverse Z transform of any function or any polynomial x of z which you will give us the output as x of k. Right, so we are going to obtain the value of x of k. x of k are, is a signal or sample data signal which is available only at various discrete, discrete instants of time for all k from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now we have to understand what are the various methods of Z transforms, inverse Z transforms. We already know that the Z transforms are used for discrete time control systems z transforms are used for discrete time control systems so similar to the laplace transforms where we are using them for continuous time control systems so we are going for an inverse z transforms of used in this discrete time control systems so what are the various methods that we are going to see in discrete time uh, in the in inverse z transforms are the first method is direct division method the second method it is the computational method where we have again two more methods one one is the matlab approach you can say we are using matlab and we are trying to write some equations or programs in matlab which you can say it is matlab approach method which we will not be discussing in this lecture series because it is not it is not pertaining to the syllabus therefore the other method is difference equation method this will be we will be discussing under this computational method of inverse z transforms right and the third method is the partial fraction expansion method partial fraction expansion method and the fourth one we are going to discuss the inversion integral method So we will be discussing all these uh, four methods today in this lecture series. Uh, the, four, what are the four different methods, the direct division method, the computational method, the partial fraction expansion method and the inversion integral method. So this is uh, how we are going to discuss and the first method which we are going to see is the direct division method. And before going into this or discussing all these four different methods, we are trying to see what are the poles and zeros we try and understand what are the poles and zeros of x of z poles and zeros of x of z x of z is the z uh, polynomial or a transfer function that is obtained from the up by applying z transforms to x of k that is z transform of x of k or kt is equal to x of z you can say that this is nothing but sigma k is from 0 to infinity x of k z power minus k now x of z can also be of the form of b m z power m plus b m minus 1 z power m minus 1 plus so on plus b 1z plus b naught by z power n plus z power m 
n plus a n z power n minus one plus a n minus one z power n minus two plus so on plus a naught. You can write it in this form where m is less than or equal to n. If you can write this equation now, this is a polynomial form of representing a function x of z. Polynomial form of representing a function x of z. Now you can also write this in pole zero form. You can write it as x of z is equal to z minus z1, z minus z2, so on, z minus zm by z minus z a, z minus z b, and so on, z minus z n. And here also m is less than or equal to m. So you can divide this. This is a pole zero form of representing a pole zero form of representing any function x of z. So now if I consider the poles and zeros of x of z, now you can see the denominator factors when you are equating them to zero, you are getting the poles of uh, x of z and the numerator fa factors which are when you are equating it to zero, you will get the zeros of x of z. Now if we are having a function of this form, let us say we are having x of z is equal to z into z minus 1 by z minus 2 into z minus 3. Now we can say that we are having zeros at z is equal to 0, z is equal to 1 and poles at z is equal to 2 and z is equal to 3. Now if we can also represent x of z in terms of in z inverses that is if I can convert x of z here by applying inversion here that is if I take z and also consider z z is here and this z if I consider it here 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus z inverse that is z minus z inverse into z gives us 1 similarly you can consider z into 1 minus 2z inverse again z into 1 minus 3z inverse right so if i cancel out this z and z and z and z then you will be having 1 minus g inverse by 1 minus 2z inverse into 1 minus 3z inverse now this is also in the form of pole zero form right but when we are looking at this the factor here, a, po, a zero at value zero, this is z is equal to zero, is not visible here in this representation. Therefore, the beginners will try and find it difficult at the start of their uh, understanding z transforms. So, it is better always for us to go with this type of representing a z transforms. Normally, when you are going for <coughs> inverse z transforms or z transforms, you can always use any of these two forms the z, z inverse form of representing or the z form of representing you can use z in the numerator and denominator or you can also use z inverse in the numerator and denominator but you should be in a position to identify what are the various poles and zeros that are existing in the given system so with this in mind we can go we can now say that the z inverse z inverse is nothing but a unit delay operator unit delay operator now when you are going for inverse z transforms inverse z transforms the representation goes like this a capital z inverse this is small z inverse this is unit delay operator and this is capital z inverse which is the inverse z transform of any function. So, we are with this in mind, we will now try and understand what is the first method of inverse z transforms, which is the direct division method.
डायरेक्ट डिविजन मेथड ऑफ इनवर्स जी ट्रांसफॉर्म नाउ इन दिस डायरेक्ट जी ट्रांस डायरेक्ट डिविजन मेथड फर्स्ट थिंग Z transform of x of k is x of z, which is nothing but sigma by definition. K is equal to zero to infinity. X of k z power minus k. When I try and elaborate this inf into infinite power series, I will get x of zero plus x of one z inverse plus. x of 2 z power minus 2 plus x of 3 z power minus 3 plus so on right now this is these are the various factors or coefficients of you can say that x of k here for all k is 0 1 2 3 3 so on x of k which is nothing but x of 0 when k is equal to 0 x of k is equal to x of 1 and k is equal to 1 and so on these are the values that we will be obtaining when you are applying inverse z transforms right so that is when you are having x of z when you are applying z inverse the inverse z transform for x of z you are going to get x of k those are the values you are going to get x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 and so on up to infinity right so direct division method will be obtained when you are trying to get several first parameters the first several parameters of the coefficients of the inverse z z inverse or z power minus 2 or z power minus 3 right first several parameters they are only sufficient for us to work on then you can go for direct division method so we are trying we will try and understand how we are going to apply this method the direct division method for example let us say x of z is equal to 1 by z plus 1 1 by z plus 1 so what is this if i have if i try and take z common here so i will get 1 by 1 plus z or i can write 1 by z into 1 plus z inverse and this 1 by z also gives us gives me z inverse by 1 plus z inverse so in this direct division method what we are trying to do is we are trying to convert any positive powers of z into negative powers of z first thing first and foremost thing that we'll have to do it in do in that direct division method is you will convert the positive powers of z in both numerator and denominator of x of z into the negative powers of z in both numerator and denominator of x of z therefore what are we having now x of z is equal to z inverse by 1 plus z inverse now by direct division what we are trying to do a division is of this form right when you are dividing it here if i have z inverse z inverse into 1 you have z inverse plus z power minus 2 now you have minus sign here so i get i z inverse and z inverse gets cancelled and minus z power minus 2 comes here therefore now again once again i have i am dividing it i will get this term then if i multiply these two minus z power minus 2 minus z power minus 3 now again if i subtract these two i will get z power minus 3 now again if i divide i will try to do it for the first four or five terms then plus z power minus 3 i will get z power minus 3 plus z power minus 4 if i subtract these two these two gets cancel i will have minus z power minus 4 again with this iterations you will get any form of representations like this so my output here with this is for this transfer function or for this function which we have taken x of z by direct division the result is this one the quotient which you are having z inverse minus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 minus z power minus 4 and so on 
then x of z we know that it is z inverse by 1 plus z inverse or you can also say it is 1 by z plus 1. So from 1 by z plus 1 you have obtained the positive powers of z, you have converted it into inverse uh, the negative powers of z and which is nothing but is equal to x of z and after direct division I am getting this an infinite power series which is z inverse minus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 minus z power minus 4. Now as for the by the by the definition of x of z or by the definition of the z transform which is nothing but z transform of x of k what is it that we are having sigma k is equal to 0 to infinity x of k z power minus k which is nothing but x of 0 <coughs> plus x of 1 z inverse plus x of 2 z power minus 2 x of 3 z power minus 3 plus x of 4 z power minus 4 plus so on. Now you can try and inspect and get the values of what are the values of x of z here. Now z power 0, you doesn't have any z power 0 terms there, therefore x of z 0 is equal to 0. You are trying to compare these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. Now x of 0 is equal to 0 and x of 1 is equal to 1, x of 2 is equal to the coefficient of z power minus 2, it is minus 1, x of 3 we have coefficient of z power minus 3 it is plus 1 and x of 4 similarly you have minus 1 and so on. So these are the values that is x of when you try to graphically represent these values graphically represent these values you have this value x of k you have 0 here and 0 1 at 0 x of 0 is 0 at k is equal to 0 x of 0 is 0 at k is equal to 1 x of 1 it is 1 at k is equal to 2 x of 2 is equal to minus 1 at k is equal to 2 x of 2 is equal to minus 1 this is minus 1 plus 1 at k is equal to 3 again x of 3 is equal to plus 1 and again at k is equal to 4 you have minus 1 at k is equal to 4 therefore this is the graphical representation that is the z transform of x of k which you have obtained here is 1 by z plus 1 that is x of z is equal to 1 by z plus 1 or z inverse by 1 plus z, z inverse right or if you are if you are applying inverse z transform the direct division method to 1 by z plus 1 you are trying to you are getting this value z inverse minus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 which can be represented in the graphical form in this method right so this is about direct division method now we will try and understand what is the partial fraction expansion method which is the third method the second method as I have already mentioned it is um, you have two different methods there MATLAB uh, approach and the differential equation difference equation approach where the difference equation approach we will understand it in detail with uh, in the next uh, lecture series then we will discuss the third method which is the partial fraction expansion method partial fraction expansion method in this partial fraction expansion method you we know what is a partial fraction expansion method for example if we have any function s plus 1 by s plus 2 s plus 3 which is a which is in the s domain a transfer function we can easily obtain a by s plus 2 plus b by s plus 3 right and you can obtain what is a a is nothing but s plus 2 into s plus 1 by s plus 2 into s plus 3 when a is at s is equal to minus 2 
that is s n is s plus 2 s plus 2 gets cancelled you get minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 and minus 2 plus 3 it is 1 so you have a is equal to minus 1 similarly when you are going to obtain b b is s plus 3 and b is obtained when s is equal to minus 3 you have this s plus 1 by s plus 2 s plus 3 and s plus 3 when they are getting cancelled and, and you are replacing s with minus 3 you get minus 2 by minus 1 which is equal to 2 therefore this can be written as s plus 1 by s plus 2 s plus 3 can be written as minus 1 by s plus 2 plus 2 by s plus 3 so this is a partial fraction expansion method and you can apply inverse Laplace transforms to this so a similar procedure is applied or employed to find out the inverse Z transform in the Z transform method so let us go with an example a very simple example that 1 minus e power minus a t into z by z minus 1 into z minus e power minus a t for example let us say we have x of z is equal to this one in this case in partial fraction expansion method what we are trying to do is we will try to find out we will try to take a function x of z by z that is this z is brought here where x of z by z we will consider it to be y of z a separate a temporary variable here a temporary variable later on we will try to convert it back into this x of z where we will be having 1 minus e power minus a t z minus 1 by z minus e power minus a t right for this y of z you are trying to apply Laplace transformations that is nothing but a by z minus 1 you have two factors here and plus b by z minus e power minus a t now a can be obtained without any problem a can be obtained when z is equal to 1 that is z minus 1 into 1 minus e power minus a t by z minus 1 into z minus e power minus a t now z minus 1 and z minus 1 gets cancelled and this is z tends to 1 now what is the value of a that we are going to get 1 minus e power minus a t by 1 minus e power minus a t when you are replacing with 1 z with 1 therefore you are going to get 1 for a that is how you are going to get a now we are going to find out, I try to do it here, for b, when b is for, taken, you are having z is equal to e power minus a t, which is nothing but z minus e power minus a t into 1 minus e power minus a t by z minus 1, z minus e power minus a t, when z is equal to e power minus a t. So, when you are cancelling these two, you are having 1 minus e power minus a t by e power minus a t minus 1. When you are having this, you are getting a term minus 1 because when you are changing the places here, minus 1 comes here and you take minus 1 common, you will get b is equal to minus 1. Therefore, this function x of z by z is equal to y of z, you are getting a as plus 1 and b as minus 1 b as minus 1 so what are the now if you consider these two equations x of z by z is equal to 1 by z minus 1 minus 1 by z minus e power minus a t and cross multiply z then you have x of z is equal to z by z minus 1 minus z by z minus e power minus a t now we have already obtained the values of z by z minus 1 
what is the function what is the z transform of a unit step function u of t a unit step function is a function which is for all time t you have the magnitude equal to 1 which is u of t now you are representing this or converting it into a sample data signal you are getting it like this for every time t you are getting the value 1, 0, t, 2t etc right so for this sample data signal what is the z transform that we have got that is nothing but z minus 1 therefore u of t can be considered is equal to 1 so while applying z transforms you have to understand what are the various z transforms of any function of many functions already which we have discussed in our previous classes that we have discussed many z transforms of many elementary functions those elementary functions z transforms must be known and uh, understood by us then we can apply inverse z transforms easily so that you can Inver apply inverse z transforms to the given transfer functions which you are going to obtain so the inverse of x of z is equal to inverse of z by z minus 1 minus inverse of z by z minus e power minus a t now we have also obtained what is the inverse what is the z transform of e power minus a t that is nothing but z by z minus e power minus a t the z transform of e power minus a t is nothing but z by z minus e power minus a into capital T right so we can easily substitute those values while you are going for inverse z transform that is inverse z transform of x of z is equal to the inverse z transform of z minus z by z minus 1 is 1 minus inverse z transform of z by z minus e power minus at it is nothing but e power minus a k t this exists for all k from 0 1 2 so on up to infinity so this is the inverse z transforms by the method of partial fraction expansion method right so this is about partial fraction expansion method you have many more problems which you can discuss or which you can try out even you are going for any textbook and the textbook that we have, we can follow easily is the ogata discrete time control systems written by ogata now we will try and discuss the fourth method which is the inversion integral method inversion integral method 